I'm Miss Laughlin. We're at Moody Middle School today. Um, this is my exploratory sixth grade art class, and today we're learning about cubism. All right, does everyone have their page set up? I'll give you all a few more minutes. Um, while you guys are getting your notes prepared, today what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be introducing cubism. So this is what our next project is going to be about. We're going to be using collage, painting, drawing, all of those fun things in one project. Um, but first, you kind of need to know what cubism is. Raise your hand if you've heard of cubism before. Just even heard of it. OK, a couple of you. Anyone heard of Pablo Picasso? That may, name might be a lot more. Yeah, there we go. All right, Picasso, he's a cubist artist. Um, and we're going to be learning about sort of what makes cubism. Um, cubism is an abstract art form. So those of you all that aren't into the realism are going to enjoy this. So on your notes, make sure you have cubism at the top. Make sure you have a column for vocab and terms. Because remember, you kind of need to write these. I'll let you know what to write down. Um, anything that's in bold is probably important, and you should probably write it down. Um, and then image one and image two. So we're going to be looking at two different art pieces today by two different artists. You're not going to know what they are at first, though. It's going to be a surprise. So how this is going to work, we're going to be doing what's called zoom in. So we are going to be looking at several pieces of artwork. First, very, very up close. So you're not going to quite know what it is till the end. Um, you must infer and interpret what you see on the screen. Your assumptions may change as we zoom out. Who can remind me what does it mean to infer? Like to make a guess. Kind of to make a with, guess. Based on evidence. Based on what evidence? So since we're in art, what is the evidence here? Like what you're looking at. What you're looking at, yes. So, and then based on what we're seeing, we can interpret. What does it mean to interpret? Yeah. Guess. To make a guess about what it means, yep. And then our assumptions may change as you zoom out. So you will be able to see more, which might make you change your mind what it's about. So for our very first image, you are going to, this is zoom one, so where you wrote zoom one on your notes, you're going to write down first, what do you see? List the elements of art used. Remember, they're listed over there if you need a refresher. What do you assume or infer this piece is about, just based on what you're seeing? I'm going to give you all three minutes. For half of that time, I want you to silently write to yourself. And then we are going to, you're going to talk with your table about what you see. Any questions? So write down for about a minute and a half. Just kind of brain dump. Don't think too much about what you're writing. Write exactly what you see. What colors, what shapes, what elements. What do you think it could be? Don't second guess yourself, just write what comes to mind. And then once you're done with that, you may quickly sketch sort of just a little doodle of what you see up here. And by quick doodle, I mean quick doodle. kind of what our goal here is to infer what's going on. So talk with your table for about a minute and a half. Show them what you wrote. <laughs> I see some trolls. I see a scale. I see um, like metal in a junkyard. Yeah. 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 All right, raise your hand. Tell me kind of what your group talked about, Will. Um, it is, I mean, we kind of said it looks like a tree bark. Metal. Ooh, tree bark. Fit, scales on a fish. Or scales on a fish. Why do you see those two? Because they're kind of like triangles and like rounded at the top, and that's kind of how the, the scales are in the blue. Yeah. They might use like those, that blue <coughs> color and kind of like blend it together. Oh, nice. So you're using what you're seeing with shape and color to kind of make that inference. What else? What did? Yeah. Um, it kind of looks like pieces of color like collage together. You said pieces of color collage together. Yeah. Interesting. So you're making an inference of maybe about what it's made with? Yeah. Like what what mediums the artist used? Like wood. Ooh, wood. Yeah. Mm, so you 
notice the warm and cool colors, and that could maybe change what it's about. Yeah. Uh, I saw like a waterfall with like a hut and trees. Waterfall and trees, so nature. A couple of y'all I heard say you see some nature going on here. All right, so we're going to zoom out once. So you're going to move on to zoom two, and you're going to see a little bit more of this piece. So now you can see a bit more. You're going to answer the same question. So now what do you see? List what new elements you see. What does this change your assumption at all? And then do a quick sketch of a new part. I'm going to give you all three minutes again, about halfway. You all are going to get to talk with your table. Don't forget your little sketch doodle too. I was thinking a guitar. It's not a guitar. It's not a guitar. See the end? How it yeah. turns. It's like a interesting. That's what it says. All right. Who wants to raise their hand and kind of share what they were seeing? Yeah. Broken violin. Where do you see elements of that? Like the swirly part on the top, which would be like the end of it, and mm -hmm. the design on the bottom. It looks like the shape of a violin. Yeah. Good. Good assumptions. Let's see. Yes, Joey. I have like the same thing. So for me, it looks a lot, a little bit like a cello. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you could some sort of. You're seeing some sort of musical instrument. We maybe we don't know the exact which one it would be, but maybe you're assuming cello because it looks a little bigger. Good guess, good guess. Emma. It looks like a turkey. It no, it looks like a, a, bread, a loaf of bread. Um, it kind of looks like a hodgepodge. It, like it kind of looks like bread. So y'all are seeing food, maybe you're hungry. Um, why is it that you're seeing maybe more natural food things? tends to be more curvy and like also the colors maybe. Yeah. Let's see. Back. Yes. Um, it looks like a violin, but at the same time, um, the top of the part where it like spirals, that looks like a squirrel's tail and at the oh. bottom it kind of looks like nuts. So like a squirrel bearing nuts in Oh. I like that interpretation. Yeah, it does look like a little squirrel's tail. Maybe it's bearing something, like that's kind of its tail and then the, the back. I like yeah. that. Yeah, I see that. Last one. I think it's like, there's a line. Is there like lines at the bottom? I think it's the night or the statue or something falling into it, the caverns. It does kind of have a statuesque appearance to it. Which element? Remember we talked about this at the beginning of the year? Which element kind of shows power or like when you think of statues? Which element is being used here that makes this form seem strong? How did your assumptions change now? So you're going to kind of put your final thoughts. How did you change your assumptions from the very beginning to now? Um, I'm going to come around and give you all this art piece to actually glue into your sketchbook so that you can remember what it was for future reference. So Brock is one of the founders of Cubism. Him and Picasso, they were kind of like besties. And they came together and created the Cubism art movement. You might know Picasso, but sometimes Brock gets overlooked in history. Um, so this is our very first Cubism piece that we're looking at. Before we move on to our next piece, make sure you kind of have your first section done. So just kind of glue it somewhere to the side, as long as it's next to image one. So this is kind of what you should have. Make sure the title is up there. Do I need to go back so y'all can read it better? Okay. Yeah. Oh, a glue stick? I got you. 
Now, while y'all are kind of gluing this in and getting your title written down, this is the first cubism piece we're looking at. What sort of assumptions can you make about what cubism art is based on just the first piece we looked at? Is it the thing where you take a bunch of different shapes and put them together to make it look like something? Kind of. I like where you're going with that. So you said shapes, and you said kind of put them together. I'd say cubism has those elements for sure. What else can you guys assume about cubism just based on the first piece alone with no context? Form, yes. Abstract, I like that word. However, maybe we don't know what abstract actually means. Can someone sort of try to define? What is abstract? It's kind of abstract, but can anyone kind of define abstract for me? Best guess, yeah? Not real. Yep, that's actually a great guess. Not real. Yeah, so maybe it, you, it's scrambled up. So abstract something could be an image that's scrambled up. Yes. So maybe it has elements of realism. Realism is something that looks realistic. Um, but maybe not all the pieces are there. I like that. Yeah. Yep, it's harder to tell what it actually is. So um, a good definition for abstract is something that's non-representational. So when we look at the piece, maybe we don't exactly know what we're looking at. If y'all want to get started on the next image, you may. Um, but when we say the word abstract, it's usually meaning something that's non-representational. All right, image two. This is another cubist piece. What do you see? Elements of art. What do you assume? And we'll be kind of writing in our sketchbooks a lot more this semester. Um, artists don't always just draw in their sketchbooks. I mean, if you take a look at one of my sketchbooks, there's tons of writing in there. I like to take notes, jot down my ideas. So get used to writing in your sketchbooks, y'all. All right, it's been about a minute. If you want to kind of share your ideas with your neighbor. Yes, the golden crown. And then you can see like an ear and some hair. Like an abstract. That's like an ear. No, that's not hair. Like, he might be like wearing a hat or something. Yeah. But like yeah. probably abstract. It's not like the noses I draw. Like you know, the ones in like the, the caricature, like the yeah things. Not gonna lie. I don't know. Then what is that on the side that just sticks out? Because at first I thought that was a ear. Alright. Who wants to share? Raise your hand. What did y'all's table talk about? Emma. Uh, it looks like he's like biting his nails. I think he's gonna be kind of cartoony, mm. but also like sad. So you I see so, some sort of figure, yeah, some sort of person. Mythic, yes. It's like a Native American hunting with that face. It mm. has like a gold like thing. So you see some maybe inspiration from maybe Native American art. Okay, okay. okay. Will. It just looks like an abstract <laughs> face because like the ear kind of that might be like an ear near the gold. The the yellow part? Yeah. And, well, not the yellow part. That might be like a hat or something. It looks like there might be like an eye. Or like a cheek. I don't know. Based on like the texture lines, it looks like it was an oil painting. Oil painting, yes. Yeah. So good assumption there about maybe what medium it was made with. Yes. It looks like one of those feathered headbands with feathers like sticking out in the back. Um, oh. And it looks like it's a person's eye and an ear like just over here. And yeah, that's what it looks like. It looks like a they're wearing a headband with feathers sticking out in the back. Cause 
when you look at the picture over there, you can see kind of the shapes of the feathers. Yes. Silently, let's think to yourself first for about a minute, and then you'll get to talk. I love seeing y'all's different styles of note taking. Some of y'all go for color. Some of y'all go for big writing. All right, what are we noticing? I want to hear from some people I haven't heard from yet. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. So maybe he's wearing some sort of mask because you see two different kind of color schemes. Like it. I want to hear from some people I haven't heard from. I've heard from Will and Mythic a lot. Yeah. I can see new facial features like hair and eyes. Yep, so now y'all kind of see some hair and some eyes. Are they realistic hair and eyes? Mm -hmm. Definitely not. But because as humans, we tend to look for things that look human-like in objects, we kind of see those features. Yeah. I love that assumption, yes. So maybe there's, you see some emotion going on in the face. Even though the face isn't exactly realistic, you can maybe start making some guesses about the feelings of this person based on the color, like the blue going down the face. Will. I think like the two eyes are like covered, they're kind of like fake eyes, like the glass fake lens have like the eyes. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm So and this like the mask is falling off and the eyes are like about to like So we're seeing a clear distinction between Because I think like the gold is kinda like the actual person's like skin. Mm-hmm. So we're seeing a clear distinction maybe between maybe there's something on its face versus the skin. Um mythic, yes. So you're still seeing kind of those Native American influences, like okay. Mm. Yes, Connor. The person has really nice eyelashes. <laughs> they do have some nice eyelashes. Really nice. They're very full. All right, one more. So you think this right here could maybe represent something coming out of the mouth, whether that be words or something? I like that interpretation. I heard some guesses about maybe who this is by. Who do y'all think this piece is by? Picasso. Picasso. Why do y'all say that? So here's the whole piece. It is by Picasso. Based on what you know, why? Yeah, you got it exactly right. So the title is Weeping Woman. So good job making that inference with the tears. You got it spot on. Thank you for joining us here at Moody Middle School um, for our lesson on cubism. At Moody Middle School, Raiders have hearts!